Jesus' life was a life of prayer. And it's Luke that emphasises his prayers. It's only Luke that records that he was praying at the time of his baptism. You just think of his communion with his Father throughout his life and praying. The heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended in bodily shape like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved Son, in thee I am well pleased. My beloved Son. An endorsement of the fact that he was, that he is, the Son of God. The... Holy Spirit came in bodily shape, like a dove. Jesus didn't need that. It was John that needed that, uh, because he had been told, we're told in the Gospel of John, uh, that he would see the Holy Spirit come upon uh, this one that was chosen. <coughs> he was the herald of this one. He didn't know who he was until that dove came upon him. But that meant that Jesus had unlimited power. If we had unlimited power, how would we use it? And he was to be tested to decide how he was going to use it. And so in chapter 4, uh, we read verse 1, And Jesus, being full of Holy Spirit, returned from Jordan, and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Luke records the temptations as being introduced by being led by the Spirit into the wilderness. And we'll see that that is an interesting uh, lead into uh, Luke's record of the temptations. Verse 2 says, being 40 days tempted of the diabolos. Brother Thomas's uh, <coughs> definition of the diabolos is the elements of corruption in our nature, citing it to transgression. <coughs> I've not heard a better definition anywhere. So it was in the Lord Jesus, but it was also in, uh, we believe, the tempter too. And in those days he did eat nothing. And, were in, and when they were ended, he afterward hungered. I should think he did. After 40 days without food. And so he was tempted to satisfy that hunger. Uh, verse 3. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God. We just had the endorsement. This is my beloved Son. If thou be the Son of God. <coughs> command not just these stones, that this stone. There's a concentration on a particular stone. You could make that stone bread to satisfy your hunger. Luke intensifies this particular temptation. If thou be the Son of God, may command that this stone, that it may be bread, made bread. Now at the background of all this is the 8th chapter of the book of Deuteronomy. And I want to go there because it's Jesus' knowledge of the scriptures that helped him to overcome the temptation that he had received. It says he was led of the Spirit into the wilderness. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 1. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do, that ye may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord sware unto your fathers. Here is the, uh, the commandment that they should observe all his commandments. And Jesus did that. And verse 2 goes on to say, And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee. 
led thee. That's the introduction that Luke has to this temptation. Uh, led thee these 40 years. My 40 years. Because they were 40 days spying out the land when they went in. A land that they didn't have the faith to go and take. Although God had delivered them from the most powerful nation on earth at that time and was going to give them that land. They didn't have the faith to take that land that God had given to them. And so they, were, they wandered for 40 years, a year for a day, of that exploration of the land. And Jesus was tempted 40 days. There's a relationship there. They, God led thee this 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. To prove thee. It's the same word as in Genesis chapter 22 when it says that God did tempt Abraham, uh, telling him to sacrifice his son. It wasn't a temptation, it was a proving. He was testing him. And these temptations were to prove the people of Israel, uh, to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. And brethren and sisters, our, our faith is going to be tested. It's going to be just tested in all sorts of different ways. But we need to hold fast to that faith and uh, to follow in the way keeping his commandments. We've got to decide which way we're going to go. And of course in the case of the Lord Jesus, particularly, he had power to do what he wanted. He had to decide. <coughs> but he knew the scriptures. To humble thee and to prove thee, to know what was in thine heart. He knew what was going on in this temptation in the wilderness. Incidentally, just to know what was in thine heart, you perhaps remember Hezekiah had a, a great victory of faith. He put his trust in his God and God destroyed the Assyrian army outside the walls of the city of Jerusalem. And then he had a visit from the people from Babylon. And it says that God left him to know what was in his heart. And of course he succumbed on that occasion. So, brothers and sisters, if we do have a victory, let us beware. Let us not allow pride to exalt us. Uh, as it did just for a moment in the life of Hezekiah. Well, uh, verse 3 goes on to say, He humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger. And I always think we ought to stop at, the, at that word hunger. It was very real. The people of Israel had no food. They were suffered to hunger. And the Lord Jesus, he had no food for 40 days. And it says he hungered. The temptation was very real. It was very intense. And fed thee with manna. God provided and fed thee with manna that which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but by all the Hebrew says, it's translated every word, that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. So man lives by what comes out in the mouth of God. <clears throat> Let us put our trust in him. That we may know that we don't live by bread only. That's not the main object of our life. The main object of our life is to serve and to develop the character of the God that has called us out of this world to be his children. He, he is the living God in that he's able to beget children. 
the idols of the nations, they had no life. They could not beget children. And he's begetting children in each one of us. If only we'll allow his word to work in us to develop as his children <coughs> in reality. And just look at the comfort. Jesus would know this scripture. And just look at the comfort in verse 5. And thou shalt also consider in thine heart that as a man chasteneth his son, so the Lord thy God, Yahweh thy God, chasteneth thee. And he knew that his father was chastening him, testing him, and he held to that which was right. 4, verse 7, The Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land, a land of brooks, of water, of fountains, and depths that spring out of valleys and hills. A land of wheat and barley, vines, fig trees, pomegranates, land of oil, olive, and honey. It's a glorious land that we're going towards, brethren and sisters. On one occasion, the children of Israel wanted the food that they had in Egypt. The leeks, the onions, the melons, and the garlics, and so on. And from time to time we have to decide. Perhaps we are tempted to go back to the world where the leeks and the onions and the melons and the garlic are. Or are we prepared to hold fast to that promise of a glorious land with these products? A land upon whose uh, upon which God's eyes are from one end of the year to the other. And so, brethren and sisters, let us look forward. And in verse 9, just think of the, the encouragement this would have to the Master. A land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness, that thou shalt not lack anything in it, a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills thou mayest dig brass. Eat bread without scarceness. The time was coming. It wasn't then. And it isn't now for us, brethren and sisters. The glory is in the kingdom. And we have to have faith to hold fast. We see how Jesus, with his knowledge of scripture, was able to resist the temptation. He knew the promises that God had made. He knew the warnings that God had given. Let us then, brethren and sisters, know, get to know the scriptures that we may be able to answer the temptations, the troubles uh, as we uh, go through life. And so the tempter continued uh, in Luke chapter 4. I'm not going to go into... Uh, great detail there. He was given a, a view of all the kingdoms uh, and he said, Get thee behind me, Satan. Uh, the lust of the eyes. He could see everything. He could have it if he wanted. There must have been something done to the atmospherics when Moses went up into the mountain as he was about to die and he was shown all the land of Israel. From the top of Pisgah, you can't see beyond some of the buildings of Jerusalem. There must have been something uh, happened to the atmospheric so that he, he could see all the kingdoms of the cosmos, uh, as it says in, Matthew, in the Matthew record of the temptation. But he knew he wasn't going to have it then. He was able to see it, but he couldn't have it then. He would get there eventually. And Jesus, knowing that background, would be able to resist that temptation. Knowing that he wasn't to have it there. He will get it eventually. If he was obedient. And so verse 9 says he was tempted to go to throw himself down off a pinnacle of the, tempt uh, of the temple. And verse 12 says, Jesus answering said unto him, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And that word tempt 
is the same as that word prove that we read in Deuteronomy. We're not to prove God like he proves us. We are to have faith that he will fulfill his promises. I shall not prove Yahweh thy God. 